Hi, my name is Jacob Sachs. Um, I graduated in May of 2019 uh, in computer science and mathematics. Uh, I've been working for BlackRock for the last year or so. I just, um, I just actually celebrated my work anniversary a week ago, so very exciting time. Um, I've been working for BlackRock. It's the largest asset manager in the world. Um, and I just wanted to welcome everyone to computer science at YU. Uh, I might be biased, but I think you made an amazing decision. So I didn't take the classic route to majoring in computer science. I had zero experience coding before I came to, to YU. Um, I didn't even think I was so interested in it. Um, I actually started off majoring in math. I studied math my first two years on campus. Um, that basically changed when I went to Tel Aviv to intern for a summer. I interned with a group called Tamid. Um, they set up a bunch of college age students in America with um, startups in, Tel in the Tel Aviv, Israel area. Um, and through that process, they have kind of a matching process where you interview with a bunch of startups and you get to, you know, interview with them. If they like you and you like them, then um, amazing, you guys work together. So through that process, I was able to interview with a bunch of very cool sounding cutting edge startups that were doing cool things. One was in the VR space, I remember. Um, and I was pretty excited about a bunch of these. And then um, once I started the interviews, it became clear that almost all the very cool sounding startups really wanted tech talent, wanted computer science um, students to do technology based projects. Um, and so I, as a math student, I could say I'm smart. I could say, you know, I know math, but when it came, comes to like tangible skills that you can sell and say, you know, I can build you this application or I can develop, you know, this software for your company. Um, that's a lot more valuable when you're in an interview like that. So that summer, um, I basically realized that software and computer science is the way of the future. That's where all the jobs are going. Um, so it became clear to me that I should probably give it a real chance. You know, I, I didn't have any experience, but I knew it was, you know, along the lines of math. I knew my mind, you know, worked pretty well with it. Um, so I came back that next semester and decided to throw myself into computer science. Um, and at the same time, actually, um, Judah and uh, Dr. Leff and a bunch of other professors had already started um, building out the new department. I had a lot of friends who were in the department and were loving the classes. Um, so those two decisions combined um, brought me to make the decision to really go all in. I took two of the hardest classes um, that were offered, um, and it was a really hard semester. Definitely worked probably the hardest I've worked in my life, but um, after figuring it all out, uh, coming out on the other side, it was definitely, you know, I think an amazing decision and super happy I, I did so. Started taking computer science courses. I was met with, you know, classes that challenged me more than I had ever been challenged before. Math classes definitely challenged me. Uh, I'm not a genius. I definitely need to work hard, um, but computer science challenged me in a totally new way. Math, I think, challenges me in the way that you know, it's very complex and very difficult, but you always know when you have the right answer. Computer science has this whole different aspect of really being an art and really being something that you can get to the right answer, but there's a million ways to get to that answer. And that's something that you need to really, you know, refactor code and, you know, make it look professional and clean and run quickly. And all those are things that uh, being in the major has taught me, taught me to value and taught me to do. Um, and I think something that's allowed me to be successful this first year of working. In terms of the major itself, um, and the professors, I really had an amazing relationship with most of my professors. I just had, I just applied to a graduate program and had three of them um, write me recommendations. I have basically been in contact with them since um, graduating, so it really wasn't a problem. I felt, you know, very close with most of my professors. I didn't think it was at all that they would have nothing to say. I felt like they, you know, they really knew me on a personal level. They knew my work on a personal level, and they could say things um, on a high level about me. So in my senior year, it came time to start applying to, to different jobs and, and, you know, think about the future and what the future would hold. Um, and I think, you know, that's the point where you realize, you know, am I prepared for what's out there? Am I prepared to work in the real world? Um, that's when, you know, being successful in NYU um, meets being successful in the world, which, you know, isn't necessarily a given. Um, so throughout that interview process, I think it, it really dawned on me, one, that even after you know, coming to the major two years into my college career and really only having two years to, you know, learn computer science, computer science information um, and methodologies. Um, I really felt that even after those two years, as I went through interview processes with some of the biggest tech firms in the world, I interviewed with Facebook, I interviewed with Amazon, 
um, I felt very prepared for, you know, all the questions that I was being asked. I didn't necessarily, you know, ace everything, but I really felt I was, you know, very prepared. I felt like I knew my, I knew the stuff. Um, and I, I felt like I got a great education that, you know, compared to the rest of the field in the world, you know, the best universities, the best uh, educational systems, the best countries, I felt like I really could match up with some of the top talent in the world. And I think that's clear when um, not only did I get offers from a couple of these places, but I also started working. Um, even, you know, starting at BlackRock, they actually, the way it works is almost, I think it's about 80% of their interns end up working full time. Um, so the analyst class is 80% of their interns. Um, so coming in, I didn't intern there. So coming in as, you know, a new analyst who really knew nothing of the company when a lot of the people have had two months experience, some of them interned twice. So they had four months experience working in the company. Um, it became clear that when you have, you know, a solid foundation in the, in the foundational ideas of computer science, um, you can easily adapt and, you know, understand how to use what you've learned to then apply them to somewhat of a different situation. Um, but to learn quickly and adapt quickly uh, in order to succeed. So I think the education I got was uh, fantastic. I really felt, um, I felt lost for, you know, a couple weeks, but once I figured out, you know, oh, like this system is actually exactly like this system that I built in this homework, it's just on a much bigger scale. But, you know, the, the icker part, the foundational part is exactly the same. So um, when you learn computer science on, you know, an elevated level where you learn the theory behind it and you don't just learn, you know, how to implement X, right? Anyone can just, you know, learn to memorize how to do certain steps. But when you take it from a, a much higher level, a more, um, a more systematic level, then you, uh, you can definitely, um, you know, adapt and, uh, and succeed in whatever area and whatever company you end up going to. So in my first year of BlackRock, BlackRock actually has a rotational program. So through the first two years, I'll be working on four different teams. So I'm halfway through that. I'm finishing up my second rotation. Uh, my first rotation, I worked on an API testing framework. So I helped build out a framework that would allow other developers to easily test their APIs. Um, so that's a, a part of the company, which, you know, basically the client for us is other developers in the company. So that was a cool experience. It was building out a web application. Um, so that was one, you know, area that I worked in. The second rotation, I worked on the site reliability team, um, and the focus there is to have, is to be able to record a lot of different data and statistics and metrics about what's going on throughout the company, so that you know that everything's stable, and you can, you know, see that issue. You know, the amount of requests on a certain server is, you know, getting up to capacity. Then you can either spin up another server or look into it before it becomes a real problem. So having metrics and understanding what's going on in your company and what's going on in each of your applications is an important aspect of any company. Um, so within that second team, what I've been working on currently is we're building out an ability to see how the users of our, of our platform are using the platform. So we're recording you know, what everyone clicks on, what screens they're pausing on, what screens they hit the help button on, um, basically just recording, you know, how are people using the platform that we build, which is really important because the business partners could then query this data and have a good understanding of, oh, like this application no one uses, so we should stop, you know, allocating resources to this group and we should give it to this group. So the ability to kind of record all of this data um, is super important for making large, de large decisions about where to go with strategy in the company. Um, so in this regard, one of the issues is that when you're recording just about everything that's going on on a massive scale um, with a ton of users in hundreds of applications, the amount of data becomes massive. And to deal with that amount of data, you have to build out the infrastructure to deal with that. So a lot of what I've been doing is building out this pipeline, helping, you know, we've been using technologies such as Kafka and Hadoop, if those ring a bell to anyone. Um, those are um, storage technologies which allow for a lot of distribution that you can deal with a lot of these, this massive amount of data. So that's what I've been dealing with currently. And I just got assigned to my new team, which I'll be switching on to in a week and a half, um, which is um, using natural language processing, which is a subset of machine learning, which allows you to uh, do analysis on, on words, basically. You're processing the language um, to glean information from um, unstructured documents. So the alternatives investments, a lot of their information comes in the form of PDFs, which is really hard for computers to understand. 
So there has to be kind of a way to analyze PDFs to uh, in a in a for the computer to understand. So a lot of that is pretty complicated, and that's what my team will be working on. So I don't know too much about what exactly they do yet, but I can definitely update you once I learn. Uh, so YU, as you've probably heard, is a very demanding school. Um, we have a dual curriculum. It's super challenging. Um, and a lot of people, you know, wonder how do you handle having one of the hardest majors, I would argue the hardest major in YU, while balancing learning at a high level. You know, being in, um, being in sheer till 3 p.m., doing night seder, how can you possibly balance it? Um, so I think one of the greatest aspects of YU is that you have this demanding schedule, which has you know, which just prepares you for life. Meaning in life, you're going to have a ton of challenges. You're going to have, you know, a million things that you're going to have to balance. You're going to have deadlines for your classes. You're going to have learning that you want to do. You're going to have family responsibilities, sim clause, you know, name it and, and you'll have it. Friends, there's a ton of things that are going on and learning to balance that and being organized and being, you know, having to make decisions of when to drop something and when to, you know, make that a priority is super important in life. And it's something that, you'll learn in YU because if you don't, then you won't succeed. And it's something that you're forced to, to, to figure out, you know, when you have all these things on your plate. Um, one of my Rebame is always fond of saying that you always think you don't have any time in your day until you take on one more thing and all of a sudden you fit it in somewhere. So I think being in such, an, such a demanding environment was amazing because I was able to see that, yes, I could handle learning a full morning seder till 3 p.m. And then having super demanding classes throughout the afternoon and then after the day is done and I finish my classes at 5.45 or 8 o'clock, um, I could go to Night Seder for two hours and then start my work after that. And then on the weekends, you know, some people like to hang out and just relax for the entire weekend. But no, when you pack your schedule with things that you really, you know, you feel are super important and things you want to do, like learning Night Seder, like learning Morning Seder, things like that, then your weekend becomes a little more structured and you're going to have to, you know, spend maybe a couple hours Saturday night doing work or Sunday morning doing work. Uh, not Sunday morning, because you have sheer Sunday morning, but Sunday afternoon, um, things like that. So, you know, it becomes challenging, and there's a lot of things that are demanding on your time. Um, but, you know, that's something that is going to happen in life a ton. Um, it's something that, you know, now, to be honest, my life now is much simpler than it was when I was in NYU. I have a lot more time on my hands that, you know, is free time that I can, you know, schedule things in. But the amazing thing is once you get into the habit of you know, being super productive and valuing your time and doing things um, consistently and at a pretty quick pace, then when you have a few more hours to do things, you don't just, you know, sit in front of the TV for three hours and waste your day away. You learn to value your time. You learn to, you know, pick up a new skill, like try to learn a new, uh, something new about computer science, or you, you know, pick up another Seder, another Chavrusa or something like that. Um, when you learn to value your time and you know how productive you can be, that sets the bar for you know, what you're going to do for the rest of your life and any distraction that comes, you learn, yeah, I just have to evaluate where my priorities are and what I need to do. And then you, you work it out and you figure it out. Um, so even more than, you know, the career education that I got from YU, it was, you know, just as much about how to be an adult, how to make decisions, how to balance all the, and juggle all the things that are on your plate at one time. Um, so I think that's, that's another amazing thing that comes with having such a demanding amazing uh, major such as computer science. Hi, I'm Micah Hyman. Uh, I just finished my the four year uh, distributed track um, at YUCS. So this is my right after graduation summer. Um, I'm working for Amazon right now for AWS. I work for EC2, Elastic Cloud Compute. Um, my team works kind of actually close to the hardware trying to ensure that like the hosts in the Amazon cloud are all up to date and their firmware is up to date. Um, so my internship is actually a little bit disconnected to that, but I'll speak about some things that, I, that I've been working on uh, anyway that I've learned. So uh, some of like the tech things that I really learned that, uh, that, I, that I think I've had experience with before but were but enhanced now is um, in terms of other people using your code and looking at your code, what it means to make like self-describing code and how to break down code. Sometimes I would write something and to me it was, it was descriptive, like I would read it and be like, oh, yeah, I know what everything's doing. Um, but when I looked at it, even with my mentor, even before he would say anything, I would like watch him read it through. And I know when he gets a line, I'm like, there's just no way. Like, there's no way he's going to understand what that line means. And learning how to try and make things that you think are very complicated into something that's just descriptive where someone reading the code goes, oh, I see exactly what you're doing. 
that is that was something that I really learned. And part of that is breaking it down into more pieces, uh, moving things into, into different classes, moving things into different functions, just so that things read descriptively. Um, and so that someone else viewing your code needs to know as little as possible about every other part of your code. Um, there's times where I'd put more, more logic in, in some uh, class. I'd be like, oh, it's just a tiny function. So I'm just gonna stick it in this, I have like a model of something and I'll just stick, I'll stick a little helper method in it. And then I realized as I was writing the testing that that means that this whole model class has to be tested now because it's no longer just a model and now it's a method. And that means that all of a sudden there's, it has a test class for it. it. means someone can't just be like, oh, that's the model. They have to look and be like, oh, that's the model and some logic. Um, so I think that was, that was definitely something I really learned on tech side. Um, some other specific things were uh, Amazon uh, used like this like service oriented architecture, like company wide, where everything is structured as a service that just has an API that you call. Um, that's kind of specific, but it is a, uh, something I've just seen is incredibly powerful. You can, you can d declare a dependency on almost any service in Amazon and just drop it into your project and you're, and you're off and going. Um, that's, that's pretty impressive. Um, and some final technical things is that I, for testing, testing is extremely important. And I learned how to do it with like mocking and dependency injection, um, which I think was very helpful. And I see it a lot of our companies. Some of the non-tech things I learned um, were, uh, were also some, some things that are very specific to Amazon was like Amazon is incredibly, there's high levels of accountability. Um, you, you are, everyone's very responsible for what they do and they have, and everyone expects you to like be on top of your stuff and make sure your stuff works. And what's cool about that is integrated into that, they're very into data and metrics for defining your accountability and what you're driving towards. You can't just tell them like, oh yeah, like we're responding to, to tickets like pretty well. We're doing a pretty good job. You have to be like, well, we received a hundred tickets. We responded to 95 of them within, uh, within two days. And the other five, like this is what happened with them. And, and this is how we're improving it. So that next year, there'll only be three tickets that we don't respond to in time. So I thought that's been, that's been pretty cool. And like that, that it just provides like this level of concreteness to all the discussions. That's pretty impressive. And it's like throughout the company, like they're always like surveying everything. Like they release new projects and they're like, we're saying surveys to all our employees. Like, did you like it? What did you not like about it? Like, how are we gonna measure engagement? How are we gonna measure success? Like they're always measuring everything and, and trying to make sure they have data to inform their decisions. And that's been really impressive. And on a more like career level, something that I've been working on, especially because of uh, uh, working remote, is working on getting the help I need and the support I need for my team, which hasn't like been naturally forthcoming because I'm not like in the office with people trying to like tell my mentor like, hey, I think I need um, to meet with you more. I think I need more support um, and learning how to ask for that in a way and to communicate with people to get what you need from them um, and not and, and to just not feel like you have to do everything yourself. Um, some of the things I learned about CS as a career is that is especially about the career path. Um, I've seen, I know there's like a manager route and a technical route um, where you kind of stay in like with no one under you basically, but I, I'm realizing that there's some like more subtle distinctions within that, that you can be like a manager who's very much like a people manager who like he, he works with people and, and helps people communicate and solves those kinds of issues. And also, in, especially in Amazon, is able to dive into technical things and, and communicate. But there's also like managers who are um, who are, who are more focused on, on like, de like deadlines and, 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 and keeping things moving on that front. Um, so those are like kind of two, two routes you can go for. And those are kind of like interesting, interesting options. Um, as you like consider what you're good at, like you could be that you want to stay technical, but you want to like work with people as under you and you don't want to be like touching the code as much. So there's like the, there's like, there is that sort of, you could kind of take that angle. I don't know of every company, what it's like but you could take that angle um, where you're more like focused on, on, on like the, the, those management aspects as opposed to like the people aspects. Um, and also it's just interesting, obviously seeing uh, people down the line who are still technical and have like risen up through the ranks where like they don't manage anyone. They're just like a guy like James Gosling uh, like works at Amazon, just like sitting up at the top of the org chart somewhere. And, uh, and like, that's just, I mean, it's, I don't know if everyone's going to be that, but uh I think he's like the inventor of Java for the record. Um, and he, uh, and, but there's that kind of route where you like have your domain and you just moved up and you just, you own that. And that can be a successful route, especially in these big companies. Um, uh, some, 
ways this influenced my career decisions is seeing how a company about like ownership that in Amazon, you really like own your software and you're really giving the tools to like to own your, your stuff and do what you want to do with it. And like your manager's like just there to give you the support to be like, all right, like take this to the next level. And you're like, all right, like I'll just dive in and chug ahead. And you're not like being second guessed every step. You're, you're the leader and you're expected to be the leader. And I think that's, that's kind of cool to look for in a company where you're able to like to own your part of the software. Um, and uh, some other things is like the company culture that Amazon is very, is very driven and very always like pushing forward. So like that feeling that you're not static and you're, you're, you're always striving um, is something nice. You feel, like, you feel like there's still room for you to do something. It's not like, oh, we built this sick product and now like we'll have some people on to do operations for it. It's we're, we're pushing forward. Like how are we gonna drive the next thing? How are we gonna do the next thing? And that's kind of cool. Um, and uh, the last thing is about how my, my why UCS Dante prepared me for an internship. So I found that in general, they were, they were very, they prepared me a ton. Um, a lot of just the information was very helpful. I, I just feel like I, I knew I'm working on the cloud and I feel like I knew what was, I knew the stuff about the cloud. I understood what was going on, how it worked, what the problems are, what the opportunities are. Um, I felt like I just, I, I knew my stuff going in with that. And especially, and then for, for actually my project, I found that like the big projects in that I did in YU um, were very helpful. Like that's where I really learned like the um, software engineering principles. Um, I learned, especially testing has been very critical. I, I, we, I we designed very rigorous unit tests um, and that skill has come in very helpful. And even just like seeing um, when, when like some slides have like, you see like the approach that professors took to problems. And so you've seen like, oh, okay, that's like the kind of way a solution for that kind of problem will look. So those are always like in the back of my mind is like the ways to do things. Um, and I, I mean, I found that, that those things have been very, very helpful.